hi guys welcome back to my channel so in the previous video we have seen how to overcome a SQS payload size limit 256 KB using a Java code Means the library is SQS extended library we have seen how to use that extended library using a Java code so the basic idea of SQS extended library is normally the SQS payload will directly will put in the SQS and the receiver will receive the whole payload because it is less than 256 KB we will send but the SQS won't support the payload sizes more than 256 KB so that's why SQS extended library will use an S3 bucket to store the files whichever the payload size is more than 256 KB in S3 bucket and this S3 bucket name and S3 file name it will send to the SQS and as soon as we send those details to SQS the receiver will receive those details of the bucket and file then the receiver can read the file from the S3 and read the content this is the basic idea of extended library so in this we will see a python code demo in this video in the previous video we have seen a java code demo in this video we will see a python code demo so we need three components we need we need an SQS for this demo we need an S3 bucket for this demo because the large files will use this S3 bucket to store and we need a receiver in this we have a lambda function which is the receiver for the SQS so SQS we have added a trigger to the SQS so here the SQS is Ashok test SQS extended the S3 bucket is Ashok test SQS extended if you see there are no files now and this is the lambda which is the receiver we had a trigger and this lambda should have a permission permissions of this AWS lambda basic execution rule AWS lambda SQS queue execution rule then we are able then the lambda can receive the messages otherwise it can't receive if you see here provides receive message so we will see a python code for this so first we will try to keep a normal small message so this is the a method in this method we will just get a resource to the SQS and queue URL so the actual queue we are going to put the message we will get the URL of that so how to get the URL if you go to the queues this is the queue and we got this URL you can just copy this and put in your code here then after that receive resources queue queue url with the queue url we will just the queue object and using that queue we can send a message in that send message function we will use what is the queue url some other configurations and we we can send message attributes to the queue and we can send actual message body so first we will send a small message so this is a small message less than 256 KB and we will see whether it will receive or not so we will just go to the terminal and try to run this so we got the response so message already sent so now we will go to the lambdas cloud watch logs so let's go to the latest log and we are in our lambda code we are just printing the event you see this is the print event so whatever we receive we should get in the cloud watch logs and this is the whole message in this whole message you can check the body small message less than 256 kb that's what's the message we have sent in this queue now try to send a bigger message so in the python how to make a bigger string is this string val and this is the character and these many times so this is equal to the 500 kb so this string is 500 kb size let's try to pass this message now and now try to run it should fail so 
so now we got the actual message here you can see an error occurred invalid parameter value when calling send message operation one or more parameters are invalid the reason is message must be shorter than these many bytes but what the message we are sending is 500 kb but this is 262 kb so we need to use sqs extended client in order to solve this so we will just uncomment this import sqs extended client and we will just lodge payload support we will just add a support of lodge payload for this bucket so our bucket name is this so if you see our bucket name is ashok test sqs extended one so we just need to give the that bucket so that this sqs this queue will use this bucket to store the larger files now this is 500 kb size and we have imported sqs extended client and now this should work now try to execute again so now we don't have any error let's go to the receiver lambda and we can also see that file in the s3 bucket now let's refresh it so you can see we have a file if you download and check the content will be x that to those many times we have mentioned in our code so the same message but in our sks receiver receiver will receive just a link or what is the s3 bucket name what is the file name it will receive let's go to receiver cloud watch logs and check so let's open the latest one and let's check the last event let's go to the body in this body if you check now we received message s3 bucket name that is ashok test sqs extended one and s3 key is eb260 so this is what the same file eb260 so receiver we just need to access this file from this bucket again we can write a small code to connect this bucket and file just read the file and get the content and do the following logic but if you check in our previous message as it is smaller we got the direct message here so extended library will use a direct message concept if it is less than 256 kb if it is more than 256 kb then it will use s3 bucket otherwise it won't use s3 bucket so so in order to work this code you need to install this sqs extended client in the machine you can use pip in sudo pip install sqs extended client so that this extended client library will get installed in our machine then it it will be used in our code so i hope you like this video and understood the sqs extended library concept and also how to do it in the python language so please like share and subscribe my channel for more videos and more demo codes like this and also share to your friends thank you for watching